And tonight, he's helping out one of his fellow flyers. It's time now for our Buzz in the Bay with Cron Force Ken Wayne. All right, Ken, so pretty exciting. I am a big animal lover. You are too, apparently. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> so give us a little insight on who this new friend of yours is that you rescued. I got a call from Sonoma Wildlife Rescue. They said they had a peregrine falcon that had been injured and brought in and uh, they thought uh, it was going to have to be kept from the wild because of a head injury that it suffered and some eyesight problems. Um, and then uh, a veterinarian took another look at it and said, I think we can uh, work with this bird. And they eventually got it healthy enough to where it could be released into the wild. But the bird was from Southern California. Wow. And so to drive it, it's, it's a delicate animal. They're very shy. Um, they don't like a lot of human contact. So to drive it would be, you know, 500 miles in a car, about eight or nine hours, depending on traffic. And they called me and said, do you think you can fly a falcon down to Carlsbad? And I said, sure. Wow. So it's, you know, it's like a three or four hour flight. Yeah. Um, a lot of less stress on the bird. So that was the whole point of bringing it down there. And what was that experience like handling the falcon, having to fly with well, it? They put it in a little cardboard box and the bird's pretty good size. You can see the box there. Uh, the bird's probably two or three feet tall. But it, it's so light, it's like carrying nothing. It's like the box was empty. The bird is so incredibly light, you know, obviously, because it wow. flies. Uh -huh. um, so it just kind of rustled around a little bit. But once we took off, and this happens almost every time I fly an animal, once you get up to your altitude and you're cruising, they kind of just go to sleep or they just settle down. I couldn't see it because it was in the box and I didn't want to disturb it, so I just kind of left it alone. But it was very quiet. And then when we landed, I handed it over to a volunteer who took it out to the to the release place. So by the time it left Petaluma and was out in the wild was probably about four hours and it was back home in Southern California. And it was back home just like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. It's really okay. cool. That is really cool. And you know, you're, you have done this for a while now. Like we mentioned, you've rescued other animals. Right. But what was maybe something super special about this moment with the falcon? Just the, the satisfaction of putting it where it belongs, you know, and all the people that work so hard to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And that's just the reward. It's just that this uh, bird, we don't know how it got injured. It could have got hit by a car, you know, hit a windshield, who knows. Um, but to just have such a magnificent creature go back where it belongs. I mean, it's the fastest animal in the world. It can fly over 200 miles an hour when it's diving for prey. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's incredible. So they're really remarkable and special. And, you know, they, that's where they belong. So it's, it's fun yeah. to put them back there. Well, you know what else is special? Bear cubs. Yeah. And that's kind of where you where it all got started. Tell us that story about how you rescued a bear cub. Well, it was, uh, <laughs> um, there's a group called Pilots and Paws. So you get all these emails and I happened to just catch it at the right time. I saw there were two bear cubs in Lake Tahoe and they're asking for them to be flown down to San Diego County to a rehabilitation center. And so I, I called them and, and got the flight and this one was tricky because we had to take all the seats out of the airplane, put this huge steel crate in the plane that was very heavy. It took two of us to struggle to get it in there, then put the front seats back in the plane so I could fly the plane down, <laughs> and then do the reverse when we got to Southern California coming back because we brought another bear cub back from Southern California back to Tahoe. So it was a very long day. It was like 10 hours Aww. of flying time. So but cute. they were so cute. Their mom had been hit by a car in Mariposa County oh. and the two cubs, it was winter time, where winter was approaching and they needed to be someplace because they're too young to hibernate. So they thought, we'll put them at this other sanctuary in Southern California where it's warmer. And then this other bear cub uh, was by itself. There was another bear cub left alone in Tahoe. So they thought, well, we'll bring this one back up. So he has a buddy. And uh, so it all worked out, but it was a really long day. I bet. Yeah. Not a lot of people could say that they've rescued bears. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. Well, they, they were scratching around in their stuff. You knew there was a bear in your plane and it's kind of like, I don't know about this. I got two <laughs> bears in the plane. I, I'm yeah. pretty sure they can't get out, but you know, it, yeah, was, it was fine. It comes in, it comes in your mind, right? right well, right. what are you working on next? We have, this is really special. Um, a family from Ukraine fled the war. They're settled in the North Bay, and uh, one of them, the youngest, is a 10-year-old girl, and she was crying every night because she missed her cat that mm -hmm. she had to leave behind. Well, a group of people got together and said, let's get this cat here with the little girl where it belongs. And this was an international, thousands of miles, many, many day odyssey to get this little cat from Ukraine out. It took us, it, it went from 
a back of a motorcycle to Moldova, to a car, to Bucharest, to a plane to Athens. Eventually, it came back here to Northern California. So we're going to do this whole, piece together this whole incredible journey of getting this little cat to this little girl, and they're both so happy now. You're just doing so many yeah. incredible things with yeah, all these amazing. animals. It's an amazing story. And yeah. all these people, I, you know, I, I help bring to light these stories. It's, it's not me. It's These stories are out there all the time. Mm -hmm. But it's fun to kind of put a spotlight on them and let people know what's going on. But why is it important to you? It's just, you know, you're an animal lover. You know, yeah. you don't want to see animals suffering. You don't no. want to, you know. So um, it, it's, it's really great when you get these animals, especially dogs in particular, and that's what I usually fly. Just their eyes, you can tell they're like, thank you. I mean, it's like they can tell you're going to help me because usually they're not in a good situation. They're in an animal shelter or they've been through some trauma and you get them in the plane and you put them in the back seat and they just kind of immediately settle down and fall asleep once you get up to altitude and you're handing them off to another group that's doing such a great job getting them to a happy home, getting them to a healthier life. And, you know, it's just so rewarding. It just really makes you feel good. Well, thank you for all of the work that you are doing. It, it is important. Now, people can actually watch this Falcon story tonight, right? Six, eight, and ten tonight on Cron 4. Incredible. Thank you so much, Ken, for joining us thank on you, Live in the Bay. You can check out Ken's story tonight on Cron 4 News starting at 6 p.m. And you can